Photon torpedoes are bright, glowing balls of deadliness used by many of the major starfaring civilizations in Star Trek. The technology used in these weapons surpasses the destructive power of any nuclear weapon we've created here on Earth. Now let's break down photon torpedoes, the secret to their destructive power and their tactical use in the Star Trek universe. The secret to the photon torpedoes destructive power is an antimatter warhead. What's antimatter? Antimatter is a form of matter that has a reverse polarity at the atomic level. Think of all the matter in the universe as highly explosive dynamite, only this dynamite has levels of power that is nuclear. Now think of antimatter as a spark. When the spark makes contact with any of the dynamite, annihilation results. When matter and antimatter come into contact, they butt heads so violently that the result is a burst of radiation and plasma that puts our nuclear weapons to shame. To give further context, if just one gram of antimatter, that's about a tenth of a tablespoon, comes into contact with normal matter, the resulting explosion is equivalent to 42 kilotons of TNT, or two or three times the destructive power of the atomic bombs used during World War II. Now at present, it is prohibitively expensive to create antimatter, on the order of billions or trillions of dollars to create a very small amount of antimatter, much less contain it. But by the 23rd century, antimatter is used to power starships and for weaponry. So let's open up the hood on these photon torpedoes and break it down. In this tank is the antimatter, where it's held safely by electromagnetic fields. In this tank here is the matter, in this case deuterium or a form of liquid hydrogen. Back here is a propulsion system also powered by antimatter. The torpedo in this state, even though it could be destructive if containment fails, is not even fully armed. About a second after the torpedo is launched, the matter and antimatter is mixed in this chamber here, but they don't actually touch. They're separated by hundreds of electromagnetic fields. This mixing process facilitates a more complete and efficient matter-antimatter annihilation. When the torpedo impacts is when the electromagnetic fields burst and the massive explosion results. So you can see why and how these torpedoes are so destructive. But why are they called photon torpedoes and not simply antimatter torpedoes? This has bugged me for some time and I would love to hear some of your theories in the comments about why they're called photon torpedoes. Here's my theory. A photon in physics is a measure of light or that which is emitted from an electromagnetic field. I believe the electromagnetic containment fields in the forward section of the torpedo are so strong that this is where the light is coming from, and it may actually be seen through the outer casing, or the casing may even be a bit translucent. And we can take this a step further. Photon torpedoes, although they're not capable of accelerating to warp speed, have a warp sustainment drive, something like a mini warp field. This is why they can be fired at warp speed and sustain the warp speed of the vessel it was fired from. Now photon torpedoes certainly have a veil of not only electromagnetic fields, but warp fields around them, and even deflector shields. We're pretty sure photon torpedoes have deflector shields since I believe it's been mentioned, and also they can be programmed to penetrate shields with the right shield modulation frequency. It also makes sense since these torpedoes may be forced to fly through a lot of radiation, debris, and other hazards before reaching their intended target. So the glowing effect you see is the result of the antimatter containment fields, the deflectors, and the warp sustainment system, and why they may be called photon torpedoes. Now let's talk about their tactical use. First I must say that to survive a photon torpedo impact, the hull and shielding tech in the Star Trek universe must be magnitudes greater than any tech that we can conceive of today, and usually even that isn't enough. The best defense against a photon torpedo is not to get hit by one in the first place. They can be evaded, but to mitigate this, they're often fired in spreads or volleys. The second best defense is obviously the shields, as Star Trek shields are designed to deal with the kind of radiation and plasma released by a photon torpedo. However, even that is often an insufficient defense. There are many occasions in Star Trek The Next Generation when firing a torpedo volley at close range would severely damage or destroy the Enterprise, even with the shields up. 
And one theory behind this is that photon torpedoes lose their destructive power the further away they get, since they're expending antimatter fuel in flight. But at close range, they're still full of antimatter fuel and much more dangerous. Although I'm not certain about this, perhaps this is something that you guys can help with in the comments as well. But we do know that without shields, photon torpedoes are hull breakers. They aren't meant to target subsystems or disable other ships. They're meant to destroy them. Also, photon torpedo explosive yield can be set at various levels before firing. The weapons are versatile and useful in this way, as their behavior can be programmed with some modifications. The abilities of photon torpedoes allow them to be used for scientific research and other non-combative uses. Personally, photon torpedoes may be my favorite sci-fi weapon, not so much for what they do, but for how they are rendered on the screen, at least up until about Star Trek 2009. But I really prefer the balls with needles of light version of these weapons, which to me is the brand of what a photon torpedo is, and still the very best effect. Thank you for watching Space Friends. With the kinds of videos I make, I'm unable to make much more than one or two uploads a week and still have time to earn a living. In the future, I may be able to commit more time to creating videos for you guys. But to sustain any kind of output, I really am going to require something more than YouTube ad revenue to get me through. So when I'm working on CG projects, I would like to start making almost daily posts or updates on Patreon about the projects I'm working on. For example, right now I've started work on a fully animated presentation of the Romulan Winged Defender, my favorite non-canon Star Trek ship. Patrons can now see updates on the progress of this on the Patreon page at patreon.com resurrected, also linked in the description below. I'm also setting up a new poll for patrons so that I can make a short video, and I would like some geek input. So which sci-fi universe has the most powerful weapons and why? The choices are Star Trek, Star Wars, Babylon 5, Stargate, Battlestar Galactica, or other. So head on over to patreon.com resurrected and make your case for which one it is. Until next time, space friends.